Hi, everybody. I'm Ernie Hain. I'm the senior manager of the video production unit here in Rochester, Minnesota at Mayo Clinic. Um, I'm one of 12 people that make up the video production unit here. We have eight producer directors, including myself, and four editors that just work on a variety of programs. Pretty much anyone at Mayo Clinic can request our services. Um, and there's, what, at least 60,000 people at Mayo right now? Uh, 60,000, yeah. 60,000. So uh, that we, we keep very busy with a lot of requests, anything from simple talking head YouTubes um, to uh, patient education programs, which is really the meat of, uh, of what we do here, you know, supporting the patient. Patient education programs, historical programs, we do some entertainment, we do uh, some a lot of staff communication, staff information, educational programs, you know, programs for the nurses on how to use some new technology that they might be receiving. We do messages from our uh, CEO, Dr. Noseworthy. He's in here quite often doing uh, communications, um, either here to be distributed at mail or to be distributed elsewhere. Um, a lot of the programs are distributed internally via the web now. We certainly do a lot of DVD production or did in the past. That is, I think a lot of you probably know, slowing down DVDs just aren't the uh, the mode of distribution that it used to be. So a lot of things going on our internal website. We broadcast uh, a lot of programs live internally to the thousands of people that need to hear messages again for staff education programs or staff communication programs. We've found that using backdrops has made life much more efficient for us. You can see the backdrop behind me here. Uh, that's just one of about 12 different backdrops that we use to get to various locations around Mayo Clinic, whether it be a patient lobby, an OR, uh, a, a clinical hallway, a research area, a nice, uh, almost like a living room setting or a library, various locations where we can control the environment when we're recording. It makes it so much easier. We don't have to get in the way of patients or physician flow. Uh, we can be in our studio and yet be on location wherever we want to be. So these have become very efficient for us and, uh, and lit properly really does a very good job of putting, where, putting us where we need to be. We have three studio cameras uh, behind us here that we uh, use in the studio. We can do up to a three camera shoot if we need to. We use that quite often for you know, multi-person type interviews. Uh, see when the CEO comes in, Dr. Noseworthy, we can do a two-person interview with him. And we just set up various backdrops. For instance, this one here is in the patient lobby of the Gonda building, but there's a companion backdrop with this just at a different camera angle. So if we set those two backdrops up correctly, we can get a cross shoot with the two cameras and it looks like they're in the same room you know, changing cameras, so that works out very well. The history of our department really goes back right to the early days of film, or the early days of Mayo Clinic with film. We have film dating back to uh, the uh, early 1900s and actually showing the Mill Brothers at work here, and we have a lot of that that's been transferred and digitized so we can keep that. And then film right up through the 70s when videotape came on board with Umatic and uh, you know, three-quarter inch and, and SVHS and up to uh, HD tape, and now, of course, everything is digital. And as I mentioned earlier, we have four video editors, and they are keeping busy not just with the eight producers' work here, but a lot of the ORs at Mayo now have cameras built, you know, right into the lights. So they're recording a lot of the surgeries that take place and the surgeons want to be able to take that and edit it down to be used for educational purposes you know when they travel and, and, and go on talks or you know externally or here within mail so the editors are quite often working with some of the surgeons to cut down a six-hour surgery to something that's two or three minutes long we have a little audio booth uh, back in the edit area where they can actually go in and edit the narration to match uh, what's being edited from their surgery. So they keep busy with those programs as well as other requests to um, you know just any other type of um, editing of something maybe they've recorded themselves you know through their iPhone or iPad you know those type of requests that come in. This is the plumber building the kind of unique um, facility a lot of people aren't even aware that we're here and, and they're always interesting to watch when they come in for the first time to see what we have here. This is the lobby or what was the lobby when this was an actual working clinic. 
uh, back when it was built in the uh, late 20s up until the 50s. So this is a patient lobby. If you look up at the ceiling, you can see a lot of the uh, design work that was on the ceiling that was actually part of it when it was a lobby. And the facilities department took great care to cut around a lot of that, that, that design work up there so it's not damaged and the, all this grid work from the lights could come down very easily and the only thing you'd have to patch maybe would be a few holes, but it really wasn't damaged. So this was a patient lobby um, up until, I guess, I think the uh, mid 50s or 60s when it became a television studio and it's been here ever since. We've expanded it a few times. But we have our own satellite uplink on the mail building so we can broadcast live events from the studio. We do media tours here, um, usually a couple times a year where a physician who has a, um, a book, for instance, or a new technique that they want to talk about, we bring them in and we do a media tour working with TV stations, generally starting on the East Coast and working our way west through the morning shows and the noon programs. Well, I was just going to mention that, you know, I talked about the different backdrops that we use to get us to various locations, but we also utilize just graphic backdrops like this one. This is one used for our cardiology department. Um, it's actually part of a three-panel set that we create for a three-camera interview program. So it's, you know, this is just a nice graphic of the heart that's used for CV that sits usually behind the host, and then there's two more complementary um, backgrounds that are used as part of a set that we build here. So we don't actually have a hard set in our studio. It's either something that's brought in, you know, theater-type pieces that are brought in, or backdrops or green screen. Should we look at the next Let's take a look one? next door, yeah. Okay. And that'll give people a little bit of a glimpse of the uh, architecture here as well. So we're coming out of the soundproof door. Squeak. Yep. There you go. So these are the elevators that you take to get here and more of the ceiling of the plumber building. As they say, they don't make it like this anymore. And so we're coming out of the main studio into what we call the small studio. This is the small studio, and actually Lee had a, had a big role in getting this created a few years ago, where we actually use a third-party vendor out of Boston to help us with our media interviews. And so our backdrop here, instead of a hard backdrop or fabric panels, is actually an electronic large screen monitor with various photos inserted in it, and we can change change those photos to something different as we'd like, you know, put it out of focus if you're looking for a short focal length type look in various scenes. And again, to, get, to allow us to get to other places around mail without actually having to be there. Uh, a video crew showing up with cameras and lights and cables can be very disruptive in a patient ed area or patient area. So but requests used to come in, we would have to set up our studio, put up a backdrop, get a camera ready, find a director, find a satellite uplink engineer, uh, of course the talent, someone from public affairs, someone to run camera, and a director. So there could be six, seven people involved with trying to do a simple news broadcast to you know whatever media outlet was making the request. With this room and the technology that's in it from the uh, other vendor out of Boston, we can do that with really just two people at mail, the public affairs person and the talent, whoever that might be. The vendor turns on the lights, they turn on the audio, they turn on the IP transmission, which is what it is now. It used to be satellite, but now it's all IP. And the only thing that the staff here has to do is put on the microphone and put on the earpiece, the IFB, and sit them down and the uh, vendor takes care of framing the camera and taking care of the audio and making the connection to the news media. So what used to take up to six people now happens with two and it makes it very efficient. And we aren't missing. That was always the problem. If the studio was busy, we were unable to fill that request for an interview with CNN or whoever it might be. So this way it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My name is Chris Brose. I'm a producer director with the video production unit here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Uh, and I handle uh, a lot of the uh, live um, executive uh, communicate, broadcast communication um, that we do here at the Mayo Clinic. And I'm going to give you a tour of our master control and uh, production control today. Behind us right here is what you see. Uh, our master control is comprised of a, a number of different activities. But what you see here are network engineers who are monitoring uh, and facilitating uh, 
actual conferences that are ongoing actually at this point in time they have been using a web cams to interact with people as they are trying to actually start conferences or do testing through this facility itself over 1.5 million minutes of conferencing occurs every year which equates to 75,000 hours and this covers the entire Mayo Clinic network or an institution in flux if you will what we have is a variety of playback and recording mediums that we use here which range everything from our older type which would be an analog non non digital beta SP all the way up to what we're recording on now which is basically key pros which we're putting the actual media itself on the bricks this really facilitates HD because it means that after the actual event that we're doing it doesn't matter whether we're recording to just for broadcast later whether we are doing a broadcast it's going out on the web or actually over the fiber or in some cases we're actually sending the broadcasts up to our steel steerable satellite dishes that are above the 20th floor of the Mayo Clinic building what soft media like this facilitates is it allows us to rapidly re take the footage if a link didn't work or we need to edit it to perform some specific duty it creates a situation of very fast turnaround which means that Mayo is feels that the informational flow to both our employees and interested parties like yourself who are out there today should be something of immediacy I'll bring you in here and what you can see is this is our this is our audio booth where we can do both recording but most of the time what we're doing is our audio engineer sits here while a producer director like myself is actually in the other room directing the actual broadcast itself and so it's a full spectrum board as you can see we have the ability to both bring in uplink if we were coming in from satellite or phone con and also the ability to broadcast over a wide variety of wide variety of channels and network in terms of historic events one of the more historic events that we that we just produced recently was actually our CEOs we had all of the living CEOs here at the Mayo Clinic to have a roundtable and that was really it was part of our sesquicentennial centennial event uh, our 150 year anniversary and that said um, it was one of the first times that all of our CEOs had been brought together in one place and to hear kind of some of the information um, that they do that's uh, as a producer director here that's what I primary facili primarily facilitate um, it's live uh, uh, large crew broadcast for our CEO uh, Dr. John Noseworthy and our CEO uh, Mr. Jeff Bull and we uh, we actually have the majority of these productions that actually come up out of our Phillips Hall unit which you can see uh, down here um, and then we actually do the production out of Phillips Hall uh, we have four robotic cameras down there and basically um, the uh, the technicians are on the floor we have audio engineers uh, camera operators uh, media technicians facilitating the production that then we bring up here and then I actually uh, direct uh, disseminating medical information is something that we do um, out of the actual studio itself which you just toured um, and what we do there is we actually bring uh, physicians uh, here and then we do uh, news conferences uplinks uh, things of that nature uh, we've recently uh, redone our control room uh, brought it up to uh, HD specifications um, one of the newer uh, facets of that is uh, most of the playback that we do now uh, is uh, off of soft media we have a playback pro here this is really great uh, it's a great piece of equipment because our edit suites back on ninth floor can prep media and then via servers we can bring it over here uh, get it loaded and get it ready to uh, get it ready in really short order and that's what you're seeing here is one of the uh, one of the pieces of soft media that's uh, basically playing back off of our uh, um, off of our playback pro
Another unique facet uh, during the upgrade was we installed uh, a basically a global um, a global intercom system. This is really great for myself as a director um, because when we're doing programs like quarterly administrative update, um, sometimes programs like all supervisor, we're not only uh, broadcasting to an audience, but frequently we are having speakers come in from our uh, our um, campuses in Arizona or Florida. Uh, that said, it, this gives me the ability without a phone um, to actually just hit a button and I'm immediately talking to the crew who might be in Florida's Kinney Auditorium or Arizona's Taylor Auditorium and it makes it really easy for um, giving cue. Uh, we had a service awards program recently that was actually three site live which meant we uh, basically went around to all the different sites for presenters. When you're trying to coordinate something like that, a system like this really helps facilitate that. In my role as a um, as a as a producer, um, what I actually do is I facilitate, uh, regardless of whether uh, Doctor knows whether Mr. Bolton are presenting from Florida, Arizona, or Rochester. I handle the pre-production and the post-production for the crew. When they're here in Rochester, I also handle the direction. So, in some ways, shared services uh, works like that, uh, and then I basically monitor the programs from here in Rochester, usually via streaming web.